Good day to you, sirs, madams, and others. This is Adam with AutoAutomationBlog.com. In this video, we're going to go over HP Operations Orchestration and how to find cheap flights automatically. So I did another video on vRealize Orchestration and also finding cheap flights. And if you did watch that, you'll see that this canvas is quite a bit busier than the VRO, and there's a reason for that. And even though the canvas looks busier, the amount of work that I put into this was far less. I would also like to add that even though when I created this blog, my general idea was to focus on enterprise problems, enterprise APIs, and enterprise tooling, I'm a firm believer that if you were to use this tool to do this or do other things within your personal life, you would then be able to see how you can apply this tool to orchestrate your day-to-day -day tasks in an IT environment. So the overall purpose of this workflow is to look for flights four months out, leaving on a Friday, coming back on a Monday. So that's the overall context of this workflow. And if we do find one, we're going to pull that price and then email me saying, hey, Adam, we did find this price. Maybe you should go check this out and possibly book this ticket. So the very first step is the step that's marked in green here. You can see the border. So if I drill into that, what we're doing here is we're going to offset the time from now. So they, they already have an operation. There's an out-of-the-box operation that says offset time from now and the seconds per unit. So if, if you want a unit of, of a minute, you'd have 60 seconds. This is an hour. So this is saying... There's 3,600 seconds in a unit, and then how many units do you want to offset it by? And this could be positive or negative. In this case, it's 2,880, and that's an hour. So that's 2,880 hours, um, which is four months approximately. And the result of that is four months out. It's a day four months out, and I'm, I'm outputting that as date Friday. It could be any date, right? You know, it's, it could be a Tuesday or a Wednesday or, or, or possibly a Friday. So what we need to do is not we need to take that date, and we're going to use a date parser, another out-of-the-box operation. So the inputs of that date would be the actual date Friday that I just outputted from the offset time. And then the out format. Again, this is all out of the box. It's all documented within the description. So you can go down here. You can see all the different formatting you can do to the dates, to the out. So if I go back to input, we can see that I'm using capital E, which is just the day of the week. So like a Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday. I just want to see is, is the day actual Friday. If it is, great. If not, then we need to change that. So then I do a string equals, another out of the box operation, and this is comparing it. So I'm assigning it from Friday out, which was the output of, of result, which was the output of the date parser. So all I'm saying here is, does Friday out equal FRI? So does it equal Friday? If it doesn't, then let's offset that time. This is a very simple way to do this. It's just a simple loop. If it does not equal FRI, then advance the day, offset the day by one day. So just add a day to it. So 86,400 seconds and then parse that date. So the input again will be that date Friday that we're outputting from the offset time. So the result, you can see date Friday, the result field is the return result of this operation. So there's a, there's a few returns you can do. You can assign them. In this case, we want the return result and then assign it to that flow variable and then overwrite it if it's, if it's existing. And then return back to the date parser and do that again until it equals Friday. So if, if it's a Friday, great. What if it's a Saturday? Then it has to go all the way through. It'll add a it'll add six more days all the way through Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Once it's Friday, it'll say string equals true, and it'll go over to this operation here, which is offset the time by two days. So if we have a Friday, unless something changes, something really big changes, two days after that Friday should always be a Sunday. So all we want to do here is offset the time by two days. So we're gonna offset it by 172,800 seconds, which is two days. And the return of that will be date Sunday. Again, the result field will be return result. So now we have our Friday and Sunday, but the ITA matrix uh, API or the QPX API does not use a UTC style date. It doesn't use you know, the minutes and the seconds and the, the, the date. It uses um, YYYY dash month month or MM dash DD for day day. So it has to be in that format. So how do we get that? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna parse some more dates. And again, this is all out of the box operation. So we pass in our dates um, that we got back in, um, from the offset time now plus the four months. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass in that date Friday and then the out format, as you can see right here, is year, 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 dash month, month, dash day, day. And the result will be date Friday, return result. And then the same thing with Sunday. We're gonna take that same Sunday date. The inputs will be date Sunday, the same format, the same output. We're just overwriting that date Sunday because we don't need the old the old one, right? We're, we're passing in date Sunday here. We're doing some computations on it within this built-in operation. And then we're passing it out as a date Sunday because we don't need all, you know, we don't need variable sprawl. So now what we're going to do is set that JSON. So we have that JSON text um, via a variable 
this is just a simple, we're inputting field one. I'm setting that field one to a constant, which the constant is this JSON text. You can see the origin, the destination. In this case, it's Barcelona. And then the date is a variable. So HPO uses variables. If you want to substitute them, it's dollar sign, bracket, and then the name of your variable, end bracket. So we can see here, we're doing date Friday. If I go down, you can see date Sunday. So that's the the day we leave and the day we come back. And then we're actually gonna execute that HTTP request. Now, one thing I wanna call out here that I was beating my head against the, the wall for probably about 10 or 15 minutes is the out of the box HTTP client post, which let me let me just paste this so you guys can actually see it. So if the canvas here, so if I actually go to operations and I go HTTP client version 2.0 and I take this HTTP client post and I drag it onto the canvas here, let me drill into that guy. So some of these things are already pre-assigned out of the box, which is which is great. So like basic, um, we really don't need that because in this case, we're just making a HTTP request uh, as an anonymous, non-authenticated. So you could delete that. But the one that got me was this right here, the character set. I was submitting these requests and it kept failing, kept failing, kept failing. And I thought it was my JSON. I thought it was this operation. I thought maybe it was something with the actual server or HPO that was wrong. I couldn't figure out everything worked. I used Postman, I used Advanced REST Client, I was using VRO, they were all working. For some reason, HPO, I could not get it to work. Finally, I go through the one by one variable and I deleted this one. If we go over to the HTTP REST Client here, we can see I set this to anonymous. You can see the URL here. And again, that dollar sign bracket API key, I'm passing in the API key. But if I go down, you can see my character set, I deleted that. And then the headers, I'm setting is it just content type application slash JSON. Those are both keys. So if, if this isn't set, it'll fail. And if the request character set is, not, is set to the default setting, it will fail. And we're doing a post, so pretty straightforward. The result is just the return result QPX. Again, the result field is that return result. It's the return result is, the, this is a built-in operation. So within, Within the operations, the different operations that HP or, or various people have provided you, there are multiple re results, which you can find here. So there are all these different results, you know, if it timed out the session ID, the return codes, so the return code could be like 200, 300, 400, or, you know, maybe there's a customer return code. In this case, if you, if you use the API too much, you'll get a return code 429, which is API use exceeded. Um, but in this case, we want the return result of this, which is the it's the JSON that it returns. So found flight, this is just a, a comparison. If, if the JSON comes back and it's blank, it's not gonna have the term USD for United States dollars. That's what I'm searching in. So you can see here, I say, you know, use the, the match type contains. Again, this is all in the description. So you can see the match type, exact match, contains, contains once, does not contain, all kinds of cool stuff you can do here. Again, another out of the box operation. So the inputs are contains, the two match is that full JSON. And what I'm looking for, I'm using a constant, is I'm looking for USD. If it matches, that means that it returned uh, a, a, a flight or an itinerary that has a cost. So that means there's something there which is great. In that case, what we're going to do is we're going to get that value and then send the, send myself an email. If it didn't find something with USD, then then obviously it didn't find that flight and it's just going to end. And we can run this over and over and over again. And that's really the point here is to run it maybe once a day or twice a day to actually find that. So this last operation, get value from object, is just another out of the box operations where it's actually pulling data out of the JSON. So you can see the object, I'm assigning it from that JSON, the return result QPX that I'm getting out of the HTTP request. And then the key I'm looking for, again, I'm using a constant, so it's trips trip option, and then it's an array. I just want the first one. Again, I really don't care about the if I return one or, or 30 or 100. If there's a price under my target price of, you know, let's say 350 or $400, a real bargain for a flight, all I need to know is that one exists and then email me on that or, or take action on that. So what I'm doing is I'm getting that sale total out of that. The last thing I want to call out is within this JSON, the real point here of this entire search is setting your max price. In this case, I just did 1650 because it will find a flight. I think they're about 1300 bucks right now. Um, but the real point here is what you're going to want to do on this is set it to like 350 or 450 with the chance, you know, okay, it's probably not going to find one. It may find one once, once or twice a year for that. And in that case, that's when it, that's when you want it to email you. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to comment on my video or the blog, subscribe and have a great day. Thank you.